Hello and welcome to this episode of The Capitalist Investor. As always, you have me, Diamond Hands D, and we got the whole crew back together. Tony the Tiger, Cool Hand Luke, what's going on, guys? It was 120 degrees in Arizona. <laughs> it was 111, and I actually golfed in it. And I, I should have stopped. I thought it looks good. I should, I, should, I should have stopped after nine holes, man, because, like, you get in the cart. <laughs> like, I wasn't even sweating from my head. It was, like, from the neck down, I was just like, man, I don't feel like I'm sweating, but I was soaked and i'm like this is this can't be good i've never done that before i don't know if i'd want to do it again <laughs> i should have stopped after nine holes but I, I pushed through and got through 17 and a half yeah just couldn't couldn't my body my, my body was giving up on me but that's some intense heat we're man. coming off some uh, heat from yesterday um from the debate <clears throat> um we had uh trump and good old kamala um talking about a bunch of stuff that we don't even know what they're talking about half the time um, a lot of anecdotal stuff, no substance, and Trump seems to be repeating himself a lot. So we have some yeah. uh, takeaways from the debate today that we're going to talk about, what it means for the market, economy, what's being priced in and what's not being priced in. Um, keep this short and sweet, but we'll kind of give our thought process on what we saw and uh, what America is digesting right now. Yeah. So where do you guys want to start? Um, just quick quick hot takes on what you thought. I thought it was. I thought it was really – boring <laughs> I, I don't know it was just not it was back and forth it wasn't that structured it sounded like you know Harris had a lot of canned answers yeah um and then Trump just went off on these weird tangents yeah like he just didn't stay focused and I don't know um but he like took the bait and some of the things like she she would say something and try to get him fuming like come at his ego or something like that um, like how he was born into four hundred million dollars uh, of assets or whatever it be from his dad, or how he went bankrupt six times. Like he seemed to be like just you know, uh, when she came out as ego, he would try to make it more about himself, and like it's not about himself. It's about the people in America. It's about you know, and Kamala just came across like she was completely fabricated, like. It was completely just regurgitated. You could tell she was trying to rehearse or to regurgitate what she rehearsed in every response. Uh, it seemed like she almost had the script. So, like, again, it just it felt like every response, Trump would then go towards the border. Yeah, Everything I, was about the yeah. border and immigration. I mean, like, hey, like, hey, your, your taxes are going to go up with this. You know, Trump's hidden hidden tax or whatever and be like, I would have said, like, listen, my tax. I know where my <laughs> marginal tax rates are. And it looks like you're copying a lot of your predecessors, you know, your current your current boss and your old bosses. Yeah. And you're regurgitating all of this. So we just saw what you posted on your website. Um, I'm going to assume that you're going to go back to the Obama tax rules because I'm sure you can't like you can't come up with something on your own. And if that happens, everyone listening today, your taxes are going up 15 to 20 percent. Well, I, I think Mike a, drop. Well, uh, <laughs> Mike drop. That's it. I think a good strategy he should have had was to, you know, ask her questions and stop his response and give her, yeah, her time. We talked about that because yeah. I think like the, given that response there, I would have been like, you know, what is your tax plan? You're, you're saying that you're going to do all this stuff. What is what is your plan? I know what my plan is. We're going to go. We're going to keep the current uh, low tax cuts that I gave to all middle class America because we did it you know, for four years. Yeah. What are you actually going to do? Don't talk, talk about like talk about what you might do from a hypothetical standpoint. What actually are you going to do? And she yeah. wouldn't have a response. Yeah, she, she goes, I want to talk about the future. You want to talk about the past. And I'd be like, I do want to talk about the past. Mm -hmm. I think everyone around here would say I, four years ago, I'm in a better spot. Mm -hmm. I'm paying less and everything across my entire life. Like, yeah, I do want to talk about the past, yeah. but you, you don't want to talk about the future. You keep on bringing up January 6th. You're bringing up my lawsuits. We're talking yeah. about the past. Like, let's talk about the future, well, but like, why don't we bring back some of this stuff? Even the, I mean, like, he couldn't think of stuff like that? Even the abor <laughs> I don't know. abortion like, I just, stuff. I, like, I, you know, I don't want to go too deep into the abortion stuff, but you know, he, he did try to go, like, I gave power back to the states. I gave power back to the voters. Like, the it's more of a democracy now because people have the right to now vote 
in the laws that they want to do. If you, the people of a certain state feel like they uh, want to have abortion, then they can vote that into that state. Like, yeah. But the, the, the key thing is there, he could have gone way more libertarian perspective there and even gone deeper than he did talking about how if I'm president, I want to give power back to you. I don't want the federal government to be in your door all the time you know, in your life. I think people are tired, even if you're Democrat or Republican. I think a lot of people are tired of the Democrat or I'm sorry, the uh, government being involved um, in their life so much. Yeah. Um, now they're talking about like, you know, second debate. And then they're like, a lot of people are saying like Harris doesn't need to second the debate after. This well, she one. wants one because she Good. raised four percent now in the polls after this debate, uh, or at least the betting odds, four percent of the betting odds. And he dropped four percent. So it's pretty clear that the average American right now thinks that Harris won that, that debate. I, yeah. I won't, wouldn't disagree. I think she did better than the bar was set. And um, she tried to get more emotional than Trump did, like try to appeal to the Yeah, I, I think more. you're right. She, she, she outperformed what we were all expecting. But, you know, I think the House Speaker, um, what's his name, Johnson? Yeah, Mike uh, Johnson. Yeah, Mike Johnson yep. came out and said, oh, yeah, I'm looking at all the polls. And, you know, <laughs> the one poll was like Trump won by 70%. Uh, Camlo did 18% and the rest, the other 12% was from the moderators. <laughs> 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 All right. So, I, I mean, th- I don't know. I think like Fox already put a thing out there saying, hey, we'll do one for you guys. Right. So they're looking at October. Biggest thing, the, the, the market, you know, how's the market reacting? So historically, the market is between in September and October. If the market is up, the incumbent wins. So that would mean a Harris win. If between September and October the market's down, it would mean an incumbent loss. Well, September, we're already down two and a half, three percent. So that would, the market is telling us historically at least that, uh, th- that it would be a Trump win. Well, I found it interesting. And so now if, you, if we think that Harris is now above in the polls, I don't know, the market should be ripping soon. Well, I find it very interesting this morning um, that the market was down a little bit until the CPI print came out. The CPI print just uh, came in a little hotter month over month, I believe, uh, than was expected. But before that uh, data came out, yields were down and the market was down as well a little bit. And when yields are down, I wonder what that's pricing in, because a lot of people are concerned that if Trump got in there with a tariff kind of situation, that inflationary pressures would exist. That's what Markets the market down, bond yields are down. Right. So that means people are what? Selling stocks and buying bonds. Correct. Right. Yeah. So that's what that means in English. Right. So, yeah, people are kind of confused on what's about to happen. So uh, still a coin flip toss on this. Election. I think so. Yeah. Yesterday it's, was probably somewhat of a non-event probably yeah. in the favor of a little bit. Harris. Yeah, I agree. I <clears throat> when when you watch these things, it is. um it's very disheartening to hear both of their answers because they seem to be targeting an audience that is not too not too bright, <laughs> you know, just going right after the the headline issues. And there are so many problems that are that are going on right now, um, and we don't seem to talk about any of those big problems. And, and, it, and it gets really frustrating um, because, yeah, you know, obviously. I'm not a big uh, Kamala Harris supporter, but at the same point in time, the performance by Trump was was not great, you know, pretty much across the board. Yeah. Could have done a much better job. And, you know, it's I understand the uh, the sentiment where, you know, September, October can be a a good predictor. Um, But, you know, we've laid out the the Democratic tax plan uh, over the last couple of weeks because it's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> like if that happens, there's going to be huge issues for the market next next year. So, I mean, like even though with the border, we got to wrap this up, but yeah. like even the border, he, he, you know, one of his responses is like, you blocked it. I'm like, I'm not even in office. <laughs> I don't even, I don't know. I am not even in office to have a say in yeah. anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> and on top of that, like, yeah, these bills that you wanted to pass were laden with additional spending. That's why it got blown up. Yeah, you put the border bill out there or whatever they called it, but it was laced with all these other things to spend more money. And the Republicans said enough spending. So, yeah, you, you wrapped it up and got it 
declined because well um, the same like, the same exact all, thing's going to happen this that, time yeah the same uh, thing now, so and that's why he said a, a you giant. can just you can just walk in <laughs> you can just walk in the white house wake up joe <laughs> and close the border like you don't need to have a bill passed for anything you're you're getting yeah. other agenda agenda items passed that are not relevant to the border yeah. so that I, Again, that's all you had to say. Mm-hmm. I hate. I'll, I'll I'll give my last opinion here. Yeah. I the, the whole f- stuff about him winning the twenty twenty election and it being rigged still. Yeah, that kind of thought process. I mean, he's got to get away from that. What do you mm-hmm. say by a whisker? Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like, yeah, I was joking about a whisker. There's a sarcasm. And then the debate, <laughs> of course, host said like, "Oh, I just thought how I heard it." You yeah, know, all that. But he's got to get away from that. Like again, that is old news. Like if he wants to. Win this one, let's just go say, okay, I'll admit it. I buy the numbers. I lost that election. Okay. Yeah. Let's now look forward to this one and I'm going to win this election. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he started talking about pipelines. No one cares. Like, yeah. no, the average person the doesn't average care. The average person doesn't Even care. Even though I, I talk about, I've been talking about actually the German, uh, how they're being fed oil right now yeah. a lot. That's a very important economic thing that's going on, especially with Russia Ukraine war going on, and why a Trump presidency would be great for natural gas, you know, great for oil, because yeah. we would turn on the spigots here, and then Germany could rely less on the pipeline bill from Russia, because it is kind of, yeah. you know, society's view that you shouldn't be getting Russia or Russian oil right now. But that is important. But the average person has no idea what's actually happening over with Russia right. uh, exactly. or, or uh, <laughs> German pipeline. So yeah. it's just, you know, the disconnect you can obviously see yeah. there. All right. All right, well, we will see what happens with this uh, election as we get closer and closer. But thanks for listening this week. If you guys have any questions or comments, show ideas, hit us up at info at swpconnect.com. And we'll talk to you next week. The opinions expressed in the podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any investment, legal, financial, or tax strategy. It is only intended to provide education about the financial industry. Please consult a qualified professional about your individual needs.